I said my US family journey immediately after graduation. So when I I felt I took my step one in 2019, June. I took step two in January 2020. And then COVID COVID happened, you know. When I applied last year, I had um so many I had so many uh problems. First was getting ECFMG. I didn't have I didn't have good letter writer. I had so many um red flags. The first one was I didn't have the ECFM certificate. Secondly, I didn't have uh US letters. Although it didn't matter at that time because a lot of my friends marched without without the without letters. But what the most important part for me was mentorship. I didn't have someone to show me how it should be done, what should be done. So I applied, you know, with just my own um personal experience and knowledge. And I, I didn't have a single single interview. So what I did was immediately I didn't match of course I knew I didn't match because I didn't have a single interview. I called a senior colleague and got paired with the mentor. And from then I started working on my CV. And I got to realize that the way people write their CV for, for USM application is different. It's so different from the way we write our CV normally in Nigeria. Or even the UK itself. You know, so I think that was a very big that was a very big game changer for me. The way I wrote my CV, what I put on my CV and of course I went on to write the step three. But I think the most important part of the whole game was writing my C V, my personal statement and my letter. Yeah. Also, one of the big big things I did was networking. I networked aggressively. Uh how I did that was after I get my C V done, I didn't I didn't after getting my C V done. When I was going through programs that I want to want to apply to, I went through IMG friendly programs, so mainly New York, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, um, I think Michigan. I looked for at every program. Uh, so I, I I went to match a resident Frida, Residence Explorer, these three websites. I looked for all the IMG friendly programs. I went to their website, I checked, I looked at their residents. I was looking out for residents that were like me. Residents that are Nigerians that went to Nigerian schools. Now I know that there are other Nigerians that went to Caribbean schools, but I don't know. It didn't, that was not my own story. So I know that those people have a slight edge because they did their rotations in the US for the most part. So I didn't use that. I used I looked for Nigerians who went to Nigerian schools who were in the program. What I did was I copied their name. I go to the website. I look for their names. I copy, and then I go and search for that name in LinkedIn. That was how I was, I, I was networking. I search for their names in LinkedIn. I'll add them. If you you, you will see, I, I couldn't find a few on LinkedIn. So I'll search for those names on Facebook, and then. I found some on Facebook too. So that was a very big that was a very big game changer for me because I was able to connect with a few residents on LinkedIn. Uh, mostly PGY twos and PGY one. PGY twos and PGY threes. And I started by asking them I started by building a, a rapport with them. I asked them, Hello, my name is Nigerian and there is I got school in Nigeria, these are my scores. Uh, what do you? How do I make myself competitive for your program? So I didn't. I didn't try to ask them for a recommendation to their program off the bat. I tried to build a, a rapport. Let's say the first one week, the first one week, I tried to build a rapport, and then with time, I went on to ask them whether they were open to recommending me to their program. Now I started this. I started. Ask, I started this. Uh, in April, April, May, I already started adding residents on LinkedIn. So by uh, June, I was 
asking them if they were open to recommending me to their program. Majority of them said they already have someone, but I was able to get four, four people who recommended me to their programs, and I got interviews from those four programs. There was one, one resident that I couldn't find on LinkedIn, but I eventually found her on Facebook, and she recommended me to her program. So by, by interacting with Nigerian residents on LinkedIn, I was able to get four interviews. That was one way. And secondly, the way I wrote my CV, um, I highlighted my strength. I highlighted the current job I'm doing in Nigeria. And what, and what I realized is during the interviews, the people that interviewed me were very interested in the things that I was doing in Nigeria. Now, they, they knew that I had come to the U.S. to do an externship, but they were still much interested in what I was currently doing in Nigeria because I was back in Nigeria. As immediately after my internship, I went back to Nigeria. They were interested in what I was doing. So how I presented my job in Nigeria was very fascinating for most of them. So I, I also think that packaging the job that we do in Nigeria is very, very appealing, most very appealing for our interviewers. Now, one of the things that helped me was although I was in the US, I was I was only able to do um externship in a, in a for a short time. But before I came to the US, I did about three or four virtual observerships. About three or four virtual observerships. And that helped bolster my C V because uh, it helped boost my C V. Now, when you have an experience, whether it's virtually or it's in person, the way you present it on your CV is more important than the experience itself. Because a lot of because for my first experience I I how let me now I didn't I didn't capture my experiences well enough. I didn't capture my experiences well enough. So I'll say a lot of us a lot of us do that we don't um we don't, we don't talk about the kind of uh, privileges we get in Nigeria. As a doctor in Nigeria, most of us are, have, um, we have done, some of us have done cesarean section, some of them have done appendectomy, some of us have done, you know, like really, really uh, complicated procedures that, you know, some of us have passed NG tube during house jobs, some of us have passed chest, chest tube, but we don't talk about it, we don't, we don't, bring it to the light when we are writing on our CV. And I think it's a very big problem because I personally, when I was writing my first, I was writing my first, uh, do my first CV, I, I didn't talk about them with so much emphasis. I, I didn't think it was a big deal. I mean, I mean, chest tube, NG tube is not a big deal now. Like when I joined up, was something we do on a daily. So when I write my CV, it, it didn't occur to me that this means I should reflect them. So in this second application, my mentor went through with me and told me, ah, these are the things you should bring up. These are the things you should speak about. These are the things the interviewers want to see and receive in. You know, my CV was really short in the first application. I think it was about six pages. But when I rewrote my CV in this application, I had, I, it was about 13 or 15 pages. I'm not sure exactly. You, know, you bring out a right every other thing. Your medical, some of your medical um, school experiences, um and and I think that that was a very that was a big game changer. The personal statement, I didn't get so much compliments from my personal statement. I think one person or two people talked about it. But it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't brought up at every time. You know, it was it was mostly the C V and your letter writer. People who wrote your letter are the are very important. Now I had I had uh, three letters from the U.S. and one letter from Nigeria. The three letters, out of the three letters from the U.S., two were virtual observership. One was in person, and then my Nigerian letter. And then when during the interview, they talked about how nice, you know, my how wonderful the letters were, you know how. Um, they feel I'm a strong candidate because the social and so doctor said it about me in his 
letter. People have used only Nigerian letters. I know about my friend who marched and used only Nigerian letters. It is more of the content of the letter that matters. So in my first application, I didn't give my letter writers enough time to write the letters for me. So I think that also affected um, my application. That's not also affected my application. Then, another thing that affected my application and this was my the dean's letter, MSP. In my first application, when I applied for my MSP, my school uploaded a generic MSP for me. I asked the dean secretary if I could take a look at the um, MSP, and what I saw from the MSP was he slapped, she was a great student. Um, student was a member of the CMDA. You know, they just copied and pasted something very generic to all that like, across across every medical student that went to school in Nigeria. Very super generic, as in, oh my goodness, what is this? You know, so I had to write. I had to personally write a letter to my dean and wrote my achievements in school see what I did, see what I won, see what I was doing, the records are there, please go to it and construct a dean's letter, a personalized letter for me. So I went to private school, so it was easy for me because I, I had a I have the number of my dean. It's quite easy for me, but so I had to address the dean's letter. In fact, the dean's letter was brought up a couple of times during my interview. You know, we can see that you're one of the top five percent of your class. You know, that was wonderful medical school. So they, they read the dean's letter. In fact, I think they read the dean's letter more than the letter of recommendation because the dean's letter came up more. The dean's letter came up more, yeah, severally than my letter of recommendation. So I don't know. I think it's a problem for every Nigerian who went to Nigeria school. The MSP is really generic, except you can be in a place of position where you have them write a letter that is personalized to you you would most likely be getting a letter that would hurt your application. For me, I had to I had to instruct I had to write an application to my team for the letter to be written for me personally. You know, and so that was a very big help in my application. So if I want to sum it up after doing my C V, I did my personal statement, I got I was able to come to the U.S. with step three. That's a separate module entirely because we have we have these state challenges having a date. I'll talk about that generally briefly when I'm done. So I had to overcome the hurdle of getting a date to the U.S. to write my step three. I wrote my step three. Um, got one letter of recommendation from in-person location, two letters virtually from Nigeria. Then my my HOD in back in Nigeria also wrote me a letter. Then I did my MSP, I had my SP done, and then I researched all programs, all IMG from the programs that had Nigerians who went to Nigeria school. I copied their name, searched for it on LinkedIn. If I can't find it on LinkedIn, I searched for it on Facebook. Send them requests, chat them up, establish a rapport and then ask them for a recommendation down the line. That was this is the simplified version. After I submitted my, so what I did was, I kept on every person that I reached out to that was in the program, I kept all of them abreast with my progress. So I would say, um, hello, Dr. X, I'm, I'm done with step three, and I'm done with step three exam, uh, I'm hoping to get the results in two weeks' time. I'm currently working on research. I've been able to publish two, but I'm hoping to publish one later. So I kept everybody abreast. They didn't ask me. I just I just made sure that they are aware of my current, uh, where I'm at currently, my return of my application. When it was time to apply, I said, I have submitted my application to your program. Uh, I'm hoping for the best. So I kept them informed. They were informed because some of them 
will forget. You know, you're not really getting talking to them. So some them will forget. So the day I applied, I applied and I told them, Hello, Dr. X, I applied to your program. I'm hoping for a good outcome. You know, both the people that said they would recommend me and people that did not say they would recommend me, I kept them address. Now, after application, um, I think I got my first interview within three days. But there was a policy of, I had a policy of interview within the first one week. I think in the first one week I had two interviews after applying. Okay, I had six. Okay, so I, within the first one week I had six interviews. Now, the the interviews I had in the first one week were all from all from my connections on LinkedIn. So I had um, all the people that I know. So the first the first people set of interviews I got was strictly from connections, people that have recommended me before the program, before the Eras open. So as soon as the Eras open, I think within the first week I had six interviews. But after that, there was the possibility of interviews. There was the possibility. I didn't have any interviews because I, I, I was getting like one interview per day. But I didn't have any interviews. So I got I got anxious. I got worried. I said, okay, let me let me try and double this number of interviews that I already have. Because I know that once you get this, once you have it, once you have 12 interviews, you have a 100% chance of matching. So my plan was to let me just get to 12. If I get to 12, I'm sure that I'll match. So what I did was, I selected a number of programs that I wanted to apply to because of my data choice. And those are the programs I really said I sent letters of interest to. So I, I composed my letter of interest. I said, my name is this. Um, I stay here. Close your program. I have, I have friends in your I have friends in your program who speak about your program. And I really like to be part of the program. So what I was trying to address, I was trying to address the fact that I have friends in the program. I live near the, I live near the program, and I was, and I'm done with my exams. The month of this I think I sent about twenty twenty-five. I'm not sure, but I got immediate response from about eight, eight or nine. So sending letters of interest for me was more had I had a better return of interest from sending letters of interest. Um, than from from connections on LinkedIn, you know, if you get, if you look at the number of people I had to reach out to on LinkedIn, I had to reach out to a lot of number of people on LinkedIn, and got four interviews. Four interviews is really great, but compared to the amount of people that I reached out to, when you compare that with the 25, 30 letters of interest I sent, and I got about eight interviews. So I think sending letters of interest, there's a there's a there's a rule that says you wait two weeks before you send letter of interest. So I didn't want to send letter of interest when every other person is sending letter of interest. That doesn't make sense. The traffic would be too much. So I, I started a few days before. So I started about 10 days, 10 days um, after submitting, I started sending my letter of interest. I had some programs that, would, that, that sent me um, invitation one minute after I sent letter of interest. As you know, after I sent letter of interest, they replied me to send the invitation, invitation right away. So what I did was, it was mainly, um, I sent it at 9 o'clock, because I was in Nigeria. So I, I calculated the time. I sent it 9 o'clock EST in the morning. 9 o'clock EST. So that's about what I did. So um, connection from LinkedIn and letter of interest were by far the biggest reasons, the biggest um, ways that I got interviewed. But the rest interviews they just they just came. Oh, I wasn't expecting them, just came. Um, so I yeah, so I think that that is I was able to put my application um in, in good shape and then network network aggressively, you know. Then also I had I had got some I got some uh, interviews from my alumni, alumni school that went to my own school. I got to interviews like that. So my school is a, is a private school, so we're not that big. But people who are who went to big schools, I mean, UNN, University of Lagos, Ibadan, UI, I think those ones are more advantaged because you have alumni all over the place. So yeah, I got um, two interviews from my alumni. Yeah, that that also helped me a lot. That was that was applied LinkedIn, applied letter of interest. 
so I think you can also approach your alumni, go on LinkedIn, and then send letter of interest. It, this three approach will help, will help a lot. Will help, will really help a lot. I didn't have any uh, communication with any program before March, before March uh, application. I didn't have any uh, communication. I didn't send them letter of letter um, email asking them how to become completely for their program, and I didn't have that. I only established communication after I submitted my my application. So, so a lot of people talk about letter of um, interest before application season opens. I don't know. I don't know about. I don't. I didn't do that personally. So about the step three, what what I did was what I did match. I paid for step three. I paid for step three, um, and then I paid for a date, a USB one piece date. Well, I got the date. I think it was in November. I got a date somewhere in November. That was November last year. But when I was applying, I was applying sometime in. Um, March. I got to do for November. After paying for my test, I wrote a letter to FSMD and I asked them, I'm an IMG, and I want, to, I want you to help me with a visa letter so that I can take this visa letter to the embassy. So they replied me and gave me a visa letter. I, I scheduled my date. I had it, I, I, so I had a scheduling permit. I scheduled, I scheduled my date for May, June, July. And then I went to the website, to the U.S. Embassy website, and I requested for my expedited date. I did this all by myself. I didn't pay one a dime to anybody. I uh, I requested for an expedited date. When they when I when I requested for an expedited date, they asked me to upload supporting documents and write a. I should type in a reason, a compelling reason why I want that date. So I uploaded my step one, my step two, my ECFMD certificate, my FSMD letter, and my scheduling permit. I uploaded these five documents. And then I wrote on the website that I'm current I'm doctor in Nigeria. Currently uh, I want to go further my study by training. I want to go after my training in the US. Uh, right now I want to use this opportunity. I'm on a break. I want to use this opportunity to go and write the exams. I so that's why I'm requesting for an expedited date. And they replied me the next day or two days later that I should choose any date that I'm comfortable with. So that's how I went that I got the date. I got the date in April. Yeah, I got the date in April and I went to write um, for the interview. When I went for the interview, the consular he asked me a question. He said, Why are you going to do it? I said I'm going to train. I, I want to go and write an exam. No, I said I'm going to go and write an exam. He said, Why do you why are you writing why do you want to write this exam? I said, So if I write this exam, it will enable me to train in the US. I, I tried to use I tried to avoid the word residency, but I don't know if the guy knows what residency is. I said train. I want to train. And I said, Okay, so what do I hope to achieve with this training? No, with this exam. I said, well, if I write this exam, I'll be able to carry out my training both in the U.S., in New Zealand, in Saudi Arabia, in Dubai. He was like, okay, but where do I want to work in the U.S.? I said, I don't have a place I want to work. No, I said, I said, I don't want to work in the U.S. I already have a job in my country. I want to train. I want to further my training. That's what I want to do. And it doesn't work that way. There's no particular place to choose. It's an algorithm. It matches you to wherever you want to go. And then you train there. It was like, okay. And then he gave me the visa. Now, my point is, the consular was trying to pin something on me. He was trying to make it, he was trying to make me sound as if I had, and I knew where I was going to train. He wanted to, kind of where I was, he wanted me to say, I want to get a job in the U.S. You know, my training will enable me to get a job in the U.S. I'm a, not a job I want to find on a country. You know, so that was, he wanted me to say something that would sound like I had uh, an intent to migrate, to immigrate. So he would just crack out denying me. So I think these are, those, those are the, um, those words, there's some words you should avoid, you should not say when you're, when you're with those consular, so residency, 
get me job. All those things they sound like they sound like um, intentions to immigrate. So that's how I was able to um that's how I was able to get my guitar to provide my text. So, so I think that's all I have to say in a nutshell. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much. This is very enlightening and this is very rich and I'm sure everybody has gotten one or two things. So I think it would be nice for us to ask questions now. If there's anything that has not been clear from what we've discussed so far, I think I'll go first by asking you, do you have a template for the MSP, how it should be written? And do you also have a list of programs that are IMG friendly? Okay, so I have my template. Everybody has their own template in their school, but I have my template. I can send you my template. Uh, program, list of I am different programs. I will send you the programs that I applied to, definitely. But, but basically, it has to do with it's mainly New York programs. New York, New Jersey, um, I think Pennsylvania, then Chicago. But I... I I'll send you my list of programs that I that I that I like to. Yes. That'll be. Then somebody wants you to talk about where you eventually got matched. Where you so got was your was your first choice? Was it where you desired? Uh huh. So let's talk about the matching process itself. How was it like? You had twenty four interviews, so I'm sure you had a lot of I, options. I, I, <laughs> I had twenty four interviews, exactly. So I I matched in my third position. 